We're going to do a quick movie on some maintenance issues that you may have with the Yeti Smart Bench and some of the accessories we have with it. We're going to show you some items that you need to order in advance uh, and how to do the maintenance. The A and B spindle is a brushed spindle, uh, so you do need to replace the brushes. That's part of the maintenance. So you can order these in advance. They take about five minutes to replace. Um, you should also have a set of replacement fuses. These fuses go under the in this on the lower beam of the smart bench, right here. These drop down. You pop these out and replace the fuse. You could pop a fuse, so you want to be able to replace those quickly. And then just recently, I had two customers that uh, called with a broken switch. Uh, they had broken the, there's two little teeth that should be on here. Um, and they had broken them off somehow. That's what it should look like with two different teeth. But they had sheared, sheared them off. Um, so we want to look at replacing the thumb switch as well. All of it's very simple to do. You need a uh, Torx 15. I use a little pry hook for the, uh, to pull the, the wiring out, a pair of needle nose pliers to disconnect the wiring, and you'll have, to replace the, the brushes, you have these two um, Torx head screws that have to come out. You cut the label and pull it apart and do the work. Uh, to replace the switch, you take the back side off and you also pull these three Torx head screws uh, so that you can get into the front end. So I'm going to put the camera down and you'll be watching over my shoulder as I do this replacement. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is cut the label so that you can pull the two the front and back parts of the housing apart. And then we're going to back out these two screws. We're going to do the brush replacement first. So we'll back these two screws out. and the back of the brushes for the motor that we're going to replace. So we're going to pull this one out with the red and this one out with the black. What we want to do first is move this spring that holds it down off to the side and also use a pair of needle nose pliers to pull the rubber coated lead straight away from the housing straight up so that this is all disconnected. So I have that out of the way. This is a spring, so it popped back down low. I'll pull this out. I didn't bring a pair of needle nose over to the workbench, but you pull this away and replace it. When you replace it, you push the, the brush into the hole, reconnect your lead, and then put the spring tip back on, pushing on the conductor there. and it's done. Do that for both sides and you've replaced your brushes. The brushes are not going to give you a warning when they're time to be replaced. They will simply stop working, so you want to have these on hand. To replace the thumb switch, we're going to do basically the same thing. We've got a spring that is spring-loaded here. We want to make sure we keep track of that, and we're going to take these three Torx head screws off as well. The thumb switch is not covered by warranty. I'm not exactly sure what happened. Um, we've got a ton of different machines out in the field, but in the last two weeks I had two people do the same thing and pop theirs. So, uh, okay, these are the exact same screws as the back torques. that in a 
a second. wiggling. That's a pry bar. And it comes right out. So there's the inside assembly. We don't really care about that. What we want to do is replace this. This the spring was located here to here on this assembly. It goes in and out. And what we need is a flat screwdriver. We're going to push this all the way in, jam a flat screwdriver in here, create a little space so that we can get the replacement switch with both teeth there in it, hook down, and then release it. So we want to put the spring back on. Get it lined up. Spring is back on and loaded. Checking here and here, the tabs are good. Push it forward. Insert a screwdriver gently. I want to first take this O ring out. And on this one, the tab is underneath the edge that also has the switch. So I'll take the, and then I'm going to sneak the screwdriver in there and pry it just a little bit so I have room. Don't want to release this back end here, or it may shoot the spring. The new switch in to the gap. There she is. Second. Nope, I missed it. You'll find that when you're putting this back in, if you leave the brushes in, the springs are going to be pushing the brushes down. And they're going to block off the ability to get the shaft all the way back in. So you either want to pull them all the way out when you do the replacement or just back them off as it's coming coming in. I can back them off and pull on the wire. It's not obviously not the right way to do it, but it can work. I can feel it touching there now. I'll grab the other one. So I just let the weight of it hold it down and just pull them back out against the spring very softly. Spin it around until you're able to get everything in. There we go. And then it can compress back together. Put the three screws in the bottom. Tuck your wires. Make sure everything looks secure. Put your two screws in the back side. Hook it up and test it. Everything looks good.